I've been collecting watches for many years and I have bought quite a lot of luxury watches, but I have not bought a single luxury watch for three years. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. Well, reason number one, luxury watches are extremely expensive and they're becoming more and more so. And let's take the case of the most famous luxury watch around, Rolex Mariner. When it came out in 1953, the Submariner was $125, which adjusted for inflation is around $13 to $1400 in today's money. But no, the Submariner will not cost you that, not even triple that. The Submariner will cost you $9100, which is seven times more than what it should cost. Is that worth it? Certainly not. And especially in the last four years, you have seen incremental, very high price spikes on the Submariner, especially, I believe it was in 2021 that the price rose by 10.5%, I believe. Of course, you get the effect of a strong Swiss franc against a weakening dollar and other currencies, but even so, Swiss watches, which before were just well-made tools, are being positioned more and more towards the luxury goods which is understandable, but yes, so such price increases in just a few years, it's just a bit too much. So for me, it's not worth it at all anymore. Number two, it is the price of maintaining these watches. Reviewing a basic Rolex movement, for example, our minutes and dates, it's going to run you around $800 for one service. If you have many, many watches, you can add up and see how much that is going to cost you in the long run. I know that many people do not service watches. I'm not here to tell you if that is a good or bad idea. If anything goes wrong with the watch, they might charge you a lot, a lot, a lot. And it's not only that, but when you leave the watch at your 80, it may be months until you get it back and you don't know for how much. And there's more. Once again, Celtic Rolex will not give you back the pieces that they have replaced, even though legally they are yours. Well, they don't think so, they will not give them back. And this is understandable because these things cost a lot of money, so they, will, they don't want to see them uh, being sold on eBay or something like that. And they have such brand power that they can do this and nobody will tell them anything. Number three, you have so many great options at much, much, much lower prices. For example, you can go the Hommage route, let's go there first, and you can get things like a Saint Martin or something like that for about 200 to $300. That will be extremely well finished, maybe pretty much as well as the Rolex, and believe me, I have had both under loops, I haven't done a video about that. Go check that after you see this video, you might be surprised. The quality, the finishing, the loom are absolutely amazing in these watches. Of course, they're copying a design that might not be very well regarded by most people, but quality-wise, they're almost there. Of course, in the movement department, there's still a huge gap between the original and the homages. You cannot have a run-of-the-mill movement on a $200 watch that is going to have 70 hours of power reserve and extremely good finish, anti-magnetic properties that doesn't exist. But still, in all the rest, they're catching up fast. And these companies are releasing their own models. So how long until people start to take them seriously? And then you've got the older players, like of course Seiko, Orient, Citizen, who have an extremely impressive heritage, sometimes as good as most luxury Swiss brands. I'm talking about Seiko, for example. They do pretty much everything in-house and they have an impressive amount of expertise. So these luxury goods, these luxury watches, are not providing enough return on the book for them to be interesting. And of course, you always have the argument of the resale value, but then you also have to take into account servicing when you do that. If you have a $10,000 watch that you have serviced once, it's going to run you 11000 If you sell it for 10000 you end up losing money. 
And that leads me to the other point, and that is diminishing returns. As I have said, you can have amazing technical watches that are great, absolutely great for $2,000, for example, $3,000 at most. I'm thinking about Zin. I'm thinking at some point uh, about, for example, a Pelagos. Watches with amazing technical properties, with amazing water resistance, with an impeccable quality, even with heritage. And after that, what's the point of getting a $10,000 Rolex? Well, only the brand name. Most might agree that brand name means everything in luxury goods, especially in watches. But then that depends on your point of view. And that depends if you want to resell the watch or not. And that depends on what the market thinks at that time. Used watch prices are starting to crash. And that makes the resale argument have less and less weight. Which leads me to my last point. This is a hobby. Are you really going to be getting that much more fun on a $7,000, $10,000 watch than on a $300, $400, $500 watch? I'm not sure. I've had both $10,000, $200, even $100, even $50 watches. And sometimes my most basic watches have brought me so much joy. It's always a matter of the enjoyment to price ratio. The highest that ratio is, the most valuable a watch is in your eyes. And according to me, at least in my experience, that ratio is much higher on more affordable watches, at least lately. And why is that? Because you might, if you've got watches like, for, for example, a Rolex, and you live anywhere but in Singapore and uh, maybe the EAU, you're going to be scared to get robbed. I know that that has taken a lot away from my enjoyment of wearing these watches. When I'm wearing a watch like this, you know, I get paranoid. I, I really don't want to take it out because you see all these stories going around where people get mugged, where they, where they get mugged aggressively in big cities, especially in Europe, maybe in the USA as well. And that takes the enjoyment factor really out of the equation. I don't even wear these watches anymore. They're, they're pretty much in the bank safe 95% of the time. So is that really worth it? Well, I don't know. For now, I have kept them pretty much as an asset for me because their prices have steadily been rising. But if they start to decrease or if I need money for something, another project, I will not hesitate on selling some of them, the ones that I'm not attached to as much. Please not get mad about what I'm saying. This is just my opinion on my own experience and my, and my own view right now. Things might change as time and circumstances change as well. All right, if this video was useful in any way to you, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. In this channel, we review entry-level high-quality watches that really give you that very high enjoyment to price ratio. If that is something that you like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and of course to check my other videos. I'll be seeing you very soon on those or on a future video. Goodbye.